The M5 chip shows just how fast Apple is innovating on its Apple Silicon architecture, with a whole host of new features including more powerful CPU, a new GPU design with neural accelerators in each core, 30% faster memory bandwidth, and an SSD two times faster than the previous model. The M5 chip promises a lot, and early benchmark results have seemed really intriguing. But today, I wanted to put this thing through its paces, so I grabbed a whole stack of Apple Silicon Silicon MacBooks, and we're gonna find out how the M5 MacBook Pro stacks up against a list of computers that are frankly quite a bit more expensive than it is. Let's start by giving some broad context. In Geekbench 6 at 17,669, the M5 chip beats out the entire M1 and M2 generations except for the Ultras, although it does get really, really close to the M1 Ultra, and it even beats out the M3 Pro. That is a remarkable showing. And in the more demanding Cinebench 2024, the M5 maintains a respectable 17.3% improvement over the M4. And similarly, in Blender Classroom on the CPU test, we find the M5 chip is about 20% faster than the M4. Really impressive results for one year difference. But where the M5 chip really turns things up a notch is on the GPU. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Gamma. Their new Gamma agent is your AI co-pilot, but it's more than an automation tool. It provides assistance and aids in research to help you create well-researched slides in Gamma. Gamma is the most popular AI-powered presentation app in the world. With over 50 million users, Gamma uses a staggering 20 different models in harmony to help you streamline the creation process, and now it's even better. Use Gamma Agent to summarize long texts for key insights, run web searches directly inside your deck, and fact check claims while adding citations and hyperlinks as necessary. Rather than just generating text, Gamma helps you quickly find human substantiated evidence to back up your claims, easing the tedious search process without compromising factual integrity. Gamma can help you make graphics, layouts, charts, summaries, and more. From generating entire presentations to helping you adjust the tone, it can do it all. So check out the link in the description below to learn more about Gamma. A big thanks to them for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. When Apple announced the M5 chip, they said that the GPU could be as much as 40% faster than the M4, and frankly, that's a, that's a remarkable claim because in just one year to be providing 40% GPU gains with the same number of cores, I gotta see it to believe it. However, in the Cinebench GPU test, Apple's claims were, if anything, a bit conservative. I found the M5 chip performing 44% better than the M4. And again, take a look at the M1 Pro, it is absolutely left in the dust. And in Blender Classroom on the GPU render, once again, more than 40% improvement from M4 to M5, with the M5 really nipping on the heels of the binned 16-core M4 Pro chip. Just think about that for a second. The M4 Pro is only about 20% faster, despite having 60% more cores. And those gains get even more ridiculous when you apply them to a gaming workload. So I tested a couple of different types of games, starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an older game that runs through Rosetta, and here we notice that the M5 is double the FPS of the M4 chip. Double! That's unbelievable! And more than that, we were only one FPS shy of the 16-core M4 Pro. That is absolutely ludicrous levels of performance and optimization. So then I tested out Death Stranding on 4K at the highest preset. This is a game that has native Apple Silicon support, and so as a result of that, the performance falls in line a little bit more. The M5 is still significantly faster than the M4, and it's still pretty close to the 16-core M4 Pro. That is a remarkable performance. And finally, the most demanding game that I tested was Cyberpunk 2077, because I wanted to see how the ray tracing would do on this new chip. Now, running in 4K on ray tracing ultra settings, obviously, you're not going to get playable frame rates on most of these devices, but here the M5 chip was 57% faster 
than the M4, and again, just one FPS shy of the M4 Pro chip. Now, I should point out that the M1 Pro figure here is a little bit misleading because it doesn't actually have the ability to ray trace, so that's just running on regular ultra settings. And in fact, if we even the playing field by putting everything on 4K on the medium preset, the M4 and the M1 Pro are tied exactly at 24 FPS, and the M5 chip is again more than 37% faster than the M4. Now you might notice that I'm comparing the M5 chip against a lot of much more expensive computers. The M3 Max, the M4 Max, you're not gonna get those chips for less than $3,700. But I think it does really illustrate just how impressive this new standard M5 chip is. Take a look at the M3 Max, for example. It is almost exactly double the frame rate of the M5, but it has four times the GPU cores, 40 compared to 10. Now, sure, we do know that Apple Silicon cores don't scale perfectly linearly, but that also really goes to show just how powerful these new M5 cores are. But does all of that extra performance come at a cost? 20% faster CPU and 40% faster GPU in the same chassis could be a recipe for overheating. Well, sure enough, I ran Cinebench back to back, and most of the way through the second run, you can see a noticeable difference in the surface temperature of the M5 MacBook Pro on the left here. You can see that hot spot is in about the same spot as the M4, but it is noticeably hotter. We're seeing peak temperatures of nearly 40 degrees Celsius on the keyboard and getting up to 43 on the lower part of the screen where the fan exhausts. Compare that to the M4 chip where we find the keyboard hotspot in the low 30s, under 35, and under 40 degrees Celsius on the screen. And I saw the same results in DaVinci Resolve when doing an export. This is gonna use more than just the CPU, but you can definitely see that the M5 chip is running hotter in this chassis. This time we have about 27 degree hotspot on the M4, whereas the M5 is again getting up into the 30s, it's at 33 and a half degrees Celsius. Now you can notice that surface temperature difference just by feeling it with your hand, but I didn't notice any difference in fan speed and the internal CPU temperature, well, it's gonna run the same. Apple caps these things at 108 degrees Celsius and that's exactly what both of them are going to hit under load. So. I don't think this is a major deal. It is a little bit warmer, but for the performance that you're gaining, I think it's probably a worthy trade. But one improvement that doesn't require any trade-offs is the new SSD. This thing is an absolute screamer at over six gigabytes per second read-write speeds. And you notice the effects of this across the system. When launching games, you'll notice a, a visible difference between the M4 and the M5. And when running a benchmark, loading into some of the uh, GPU tests that I ran, it was again very visible how much faster this new SSD is. It is worth noting that both of my test units are one terabyte models, but I saw Greg's gadgets on Twitter posting about the base 512 gigabyte version and saying that it in fact also has this faster SSD. So unlike in the past where some of the base models were slower than the higher tier configurations, that doesn't appear to be the case this time around, which is great news. So now let's talk about some more specialized use cases, specifically video editing and AI workloads. Now, video editing is where the regular M chips tend to fall behind a little bit. The Pro and Max chips get beefier dedicated media encoders that are laser focused on fast video editing performance. But the M5 chip is no slouch. In a 30 minute 4K ProRes render, the M5 chip is basically tied with the M1 Pro and it's about 90 seconds faster than the M4 chip. That is nothing to scoff at. But what absolutely blew my mind was the export test. Here we found that not only is the M5 chip more than two minutes faster than the M4, it's actually faster than the M4 Pro as well. That is an absolutely insane result, especially considering that when it comes to rendering, the M5 chip is still slower than the Pros and the Maxes. And over in DaVinci Resolve, incredibly, we see that same pattern again. The M5 chip is somehow outperforming the M4 Pro. I wish I had an M3 Pro to test as well and get some numbers on that, but this is just unbelievable stuff. So it's a really interesting dynamic. Uh, and I'm very curious to see how the M5 Pro and Max shake out in this comparison. 
But let's switch gears and now talk about AI, because the new GPU in the M5 chip is specifically designed to enhance AI performance. Now, it's only been out a day, and I suspect that some optimization needs to take place, because in LM Studio, I installed ChatGPT's OSS 20B and ran a simple prompt just telling it to write a 500-word story, and that yielded a result of 35.82 tokens per second, which is very, very, very slightly faster than the M4 chip and significantly slower than the M4 Pro Bind and the Max chips. Similarly, I put an article into Pages and used Apple Intelligence to extract some key takeaways and I noticed that it seemed to run about the same and then I used Apple Intelligence to rewrite that passage and again, Maybe the M5 chip was a little bit faster, but it, it didn't seem super duper noticeable. And that's particularly interesting when we compare it to the synthetic results that I saw in the Geekbench AI test, because this tells a completely different story. In the Geekbench AI CPU test, the M5 chip is slightly edging out the M4 Pro and getting really quite close to the M4 Max. And then in the GPU test, remarkably, the M5 chip beats everything. And in the Neural Engine benchmark, the same thing. We found that the M5 chip is outperforming everything. So yeah, frankly, I don't know how to square the relatively slow performance in the real world Apple Silicon and LM Studio tests with these astronomical scores over in Geekbench AI. I suspect because this is pretty early days, those numbers might be subject to change. So we'll revisit everything with the M5 Pro and Max chips. But at the very bare minimum, you can see across the board, the M5 chip is nothing to scoff at. This is a remarkably fast chip, and depending on your use case, you might be able to get more out of an M5 than you were out of some of the previous Max and Pro chips. That is pretty nuts. And coming in at $15.99, it's a really good value proposition as well. And in fact, it kind of makes me wonder, why bother with the Pro and Max chips. If you've ever hemmed and hawed over spending the extra money for a Pro on previous generations, then you almost certainly don't need to hem and haw this time around because the M5 chip is faster than all of the Pro chips of the M1, M2, and M3 generations. So overall, I think what Apple has done here is really impressive, frankly. And considering that the M4 was a pretty big generation as well, I am really feeling confident about Apple's ability to consistently deliver results from their Apple Silicon team. It is really, really genuinely impressive. And I can't wait to see where they go next. So of course, make sure to get subscribed if you don't want to miss any future videos. Be sure to leave a like and comment down below if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.